Good morning, brothers and sisters. A warm welcome is extended to all of you, especially those who are worshiping for the first time. With us at Gikai Gani Indah, English Service, Jakarta, Indonesia. Your presence has enriched us and this is the time of celebration together. Today, we are celebrating the sixth Sunday in Lent with partial worship service. This is an online service that will continue until the COVID-19 season is over. We are welcome your suggestion about this program. Please send your comment to this email at tugkige at gmail.com. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who came in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Jesus Christ loved the world so much that he went to the cross for our sake. So strengthen us with your grace so that we may show love and forever walk in his way. Who live and reign with you, God of love and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, now it's the time for us to read your words and ponder it, reflect it. Help us and guide us with your Holy Spirit. May your words that was written in the Bible, that is written in the Bible, 
become living words in and through our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to read from the Gospel of Luke, Luke 19, 28 to 40. Luke 19, 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those were so those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this Sunday we are celebrating Palm Sunday, referring to the event when Jesus entered Jerusalem. Now that is what we read from Luke 19, 28, 40. Now, the most common vibe of Palm Sunday service in our church before the pandemic is uh, was usually a cheerful one where the shout Hosanna was shouted by the worshipers, sometimes along with waving branches of palm trees. No wonder this is the time when Jesus was welcomed like a king by the people of Jerusalem. Now, this event also served as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy regarding the coming Messiah. If we see this event from more modern perspective, from our perspective today, it is the pinnacle of Jesus ministry the best moment of his life if you follow the news on social media regarding those certain people who are called the crazy rich in Indonesia now you can find like a bit comparison now imagine Jesus film or Jesus uh, ride in all glory with his branded supercar entering Jerusalem proudly as he was greeted by his followers just like those crazy rich was celebrated by their followers because they're being successful or imagine a leader of a country who just defeated his enemy another country and return home victoriously welcome like a war hero now I think that's quite fair comparison but we know just as Luke and its readers knew that it wasn't going to be like that this event itself presents few ironies the first irony we know that after this glorious event, when Jesus was exalted like a king, everything goes 
downhill for Jesus. His enemies, the Pharisees, the scribes, the priests of the temple of Jerusalem, their resentment toward him grew stronger, particularly after Jesus cleansed, cleansed the temple. Then they conspired with Judas to snatch Jesus while he was unaccompanied by the crowd in order to put him on trial and accuse him of blasphemy. Second, we know that the large crowd that greeted him by spreading their cloaks on the road shouted Ms. Hosanna. Later, most of them will turn their back from him, even demand him to be crucified. And even almost all of his disciples, including Peter, who had declared that he is ready to defend him even until his, his death, all of them left. They run away in fear. And only a few women and a disciple, one disciple, accompany him until the end. And the third irony is, even the title given to this pericope in our Bible, the title given is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem felt like an irony. For we know that it was in Jerusalem, in his triumphal, Jesus was defeated. He was sentenced to death by crucifixion. Those are the ironies of that event. But Actually, those are exactly the message from this text that we can ponder on today. Jesus was unlike those social media crazy rich who tricked their followers with success stories for their own benefit. They don't care whether their follower will be successful or not as long as they make them rich. Instead, Jesus is ready to sacrifice himself even though no one followed him anymore. For he believed that is the right thing to do. Jesus understands his mission from the very beginning of his ministry, that is to bring forth the reign of the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, that is love, mercy, compassion, and grace from God. And he kept carrying on, carried on that mission faithfully until the end with or without followers. And second thing is, Jesus also really want to proclaim peace, shalom, from God. Therefore, he chose to ride on a colt, colt is a young horse or donkey, upon entering Jerusalem as a sign of humility and peace. And this is not just a symbolic action. Jesus practiced peace and nonviolence. He refused when his disciples wanted to fight his captures in the Garden of Gethsemane. He forgives those who mocked and humiliated him during his trial and crucifixion. For Jesus, peace is the only solution. Now in comparison, some world leaders who wage wars always maintain that they actually pursue peace, while in reality it is power and victory that they are actually looking for. But Jesus, in order to pursue and proclaim peace, he surrendered himself and become powerless in the cross. Now, sisters and brothers, this Palm Sunday, 
let us always ask ourselves, are we ready to follow Jesus who proclaimed God's love, mercy, compassion, and grace? Do we really want to proclaim that even though that means we have to sacrifice our time, our money, our energy, or our ego, things that seems to be unpopular in the world nowadays, where everyone just want the best for themselves. And secondly, do we really want to pursue peace and justice in our life? That means, are we ready to humble ourselves to serve others? Perhaps we can try it in, from our home. When we are willing to listen more than demand to be listened. When we are ready to serve, then ask to be served. When we want to forgive, then ask to be forgiven. Are we ready to follow Jesus? Amen. Let us confess the faith into which we were baptized with the churches of all ages and places according to the Apostle Christ. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was confused by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the recreation of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who live in the conflicted areas around the world, those who live in fear of war, of losing their loved ones, or their own life. Help and strengthen them to bear all the hardship. Also guide the world leaders to always pursue peace and the well-being of their people rather than their own hunger for power. We pray for our nation, for all effort to pursue the well-being of our people. We pray for our leader. May you grant them wisdom to lead this nation. We pray for our church, whether worship in person or online. Let our communion and worship empower us to always be a blessing for others. We pray for our families. Heal those who are sick. Strengthen those who are struggling. Comfort those who mourn. Let the love of Christ always present and felt in our families. We surrendered our life in your hand. We surrendered our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ who teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue our worship by bringing our offering to God while remembering the word of Exodus. Make for me an altar of earth, offering on it your burnt offering and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I have put the memory of my name. I will come to you and give you my bless. Exodus chapter 20 verse 24.
like a beggar with a gift in my hand. I come like a beggar with a gift in my hand. By the hungry I will feed you, by the poor I make you rich, by the broken I will mend you. Tell me which one is which. I come like a prisoner to bring you a key. I come like a prisoner to bring you a key. By the hungry I will feed you, by the poor I make you rich, by the broken I will mend you. Tell me which one is which. The need of another is the gift that I bring. The need of another is the gift that I bring. By the hungry I will feed you. By the poor I make you rich. By the broken I will mend you. Tell me which one is which. Take the wine that I bring you and the bread that I break. Take the wine that I bring you and the bread that I break. By the hungry I will feed you. By the poor I make you rich. By the broken I will mend you. Tell me which one is which. We pray to you, God. Thank you for all the blessing of life. We exalt you, O God, our King. May we share the gift of your love with all who are alone and hurting and simply looking for grace in their life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
sisters and brothers in Christ, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold unto what is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Go in peace. Amen.